Hello, my name is Jim Ward, and I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS PDM Technical Support Specialist with Go Engineer. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to add a custom column to a revision history table that is managed by SOLIDWORKS PDM. This will apply to both SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional and SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard. I have already covered how to use a PDM managed revision table in a previous video. And uh, that video covered how to use the predefined columns of revision, description, date, and approved. For some companies, however, these columns don't meet their needs, and they would like to add their own column. Like the other columns, they would like for this custom column to update when the variable the column is linked to changes. How do we do that? So the first thing we need to do is to create a special variable for the column. This variable only has the attribute link to the revision table. And this variable is used as the title for the column in the revision table. So keep that in mind when you come up with a name for that variable, is that it will indeed also be the title for the column. Now, the next step is to decide where you want to update the value, because you can update the value either in the data card or over in the workflow. Now, if you decide that you would like to update it within the data card, there are some things that you need to do in order for this to work properly. Of course, you need to add the variable to the data card. And then also you need to add the next revision row as a transition in the workflow. If you add the next revision row uh, manually, like within the, the, the drawing, then it doesn't update properly from the data card. So the best way to do this is within a, a transition within the workflow. And of course, when you uh, start a new uh, revision anyway, uh, then it has to move from the state of uh, the released state over to your work in progress state. And so that is a terrific place to put in these transition actions. Now in those transition actions, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the revision variable to the uh, variable placeholder. And I will show you in a few minutes um, what I mean by that variable placeholder. And then it's also helpful to clear the existing values for the revision table in that same transition action. If you want to update this variable within the workflow, then you don't really have to set those, those transition actions from the released state over to the work in progress state. If you are changing the value of the variable within the workflow, then of course you'll need to decide what transition you want to change it in and add the transition action to do the change within the workflow. The last things that we will need to do is within the SOLIDWORKS drawing. And of course we will need to add a new column to an existing uh, revision table. Uh, and again, we use the variable name as the title for the column. And then so that you can use that table in other places, you will want to save that table as a revision table template. So now I will uh, show you just how to implement the custom column in a revision table. Um, I will be using this drawing that currently exists uh, for this demonstration. It is currently in the release state with a revision of G. So, but let's uh, start over in the, in the admin tool to show the variable. For most of my variables for the revision table, I put RT underscore in front for the standard values. But since in this case, the variables is also going to be used as a column heading, I decided I would uh, forego the RT and instead just created a, a variable called submitted. So let's look this up and look at the properties on this variable. So the name of course is submitted. Uh, the block is SWREV table. You should be able to select this and choose it from the list. If you don't see it on the list, you can type it in. Make sure the capitals are correct. I believe those are necessary to get that correct. The attribute name is the same as the variable name submitted, and it's only for drawings, SODDRW. So once you get that set up, then say OK. So now let's move over to the drawing data card. I have it already open over here. Now on the data card, notice I added a tab just for the revision block. And in here, I put in um, the variables 
Uh, these are the standard ones, revision, description, date, um, and approved. And they link to the standard um, revision table variables here. Uh, the last one, of course, is submitted by, and it links to that submitted variable. Now, all of these, let's see this one, um, it updates all configurations. And this one is, is not read-only, so it can be edited within the file data card. Revision up here, this one is read-only because I don't want people to, to change this within the file data card. We will change this within the workflow. And then these other values are all updates, all configurations. So when you change it in one configuration, it will be changed in all other configurations. Now notice that only applies within the data card. So we try to do our edits within the data card. So it does apply across all configurations. Now notice it is not read-only because I do want to update with this within the file data card. And then that's true for the date and also for who approved it, as well as this last one is for who submitted it. Now let's go take a look at the transition actions. So for the transition actions, let's go to the CAD files workflow. Now notice the transition actions that I want is to reset them for the file data card. So when I have a file that moves from the released to work in process, it goes through this new release transition. So within this new release transition on the actions, I want to set the variable, the revision variable. So you set variable, revision. In my case, the value is a star. Now, in your case, if your placeholder is a different value, then you'll want to use a different action. Now, when I say the placeholder, let me show you what I'm talking about. So within your SOLIDWORKS revision table, when you set up the revision table, you tell it what revision placeholder you're using. And so this is the placeholder. In my case, I'm just using a simple alphanumeric revision, A, B, C, D, and so a simple star is enough. If you're using a more complex one, you, you'll maybe use something like this, star underscore star star, something that kind of represents what your revision is going to look like. And whatever that is, that's what you set the revision variable to when it goes through this new release transition. And then I also had mentioned that it's, it's nice to clear the other values. And so I'm also clearing the other values. To do that, I just simply say, uh, set the variable RT description, but I do not put in a value for them. The reason for this is so that the uh, the values for the old um, releases do not carry through when it starts a new work in process. So now here we are in the drawing and uh, zoomed in to the revision table. Notice that the revision table does not yet have a new row for the next revision. The drawing is also still in the released state. And you can tell that if we come over here and select the drawing, we can see that the, uh, ver there it is here on the workflow state, is released and the, the workflow is CAD files. Now within the drawing, it's, I mean, we, you, we could, once it's transitioned, come over and select this and that would add a new row. That's what I mean by adding a new row manually. However, if we do that, then it does not update properly within the file data card. So the best thing for us to do at this point is to transition this file from the uh, released state over to work in process. So we will do that by selecting the file and change the state over to new release. And then we're moving just the drawing at this point. So I'll say OK. Notice what that did was it immediately put in a new row and it gave it the revision that we specified, which was a star. Now, of course, we need to check out the file so that we can actually work on it. So I will do that, check out the file. And we can see up here that the workflow state is indeed work in process. So now uh, the first step is to add the new column. So to do that, I'll come up here, select and say insert column right, and I need to select the column and put in a new title. By the way, this is a custom column. We are not linking to any local properties, so we don't select anything on properties. Then the, the title has to be the same thing as the variable name. Now, I think we do want that all in caps, so let me change that to caps. There it is submitted. So now we have 
um, a new column just for submitted. Now, if we like, we can, let me zoom out a little bit. We can right click this table and then save as, and save the table as a template. You give it a name and you specify where you want to save it. If you're in PDM, you probably want to save it inside of PDM so everybody will have access to it. In my case, I'm not going to save off the, the template at this time. So now that we have done this, we have it submitted and we have a, a column for that. Um, I had mentioned that the best place to edit these values is in the file data card because within the file data card, then it applies to all configurations. So we have access to the file data card from inside of PDM. If we select the file and select this icon here, it does say show properties, but it actually brings up the file data card. So I can select the revision block, put in a description for the revision. And I can put in my submitted by. And then since I did this here in the data card, when I select different sheets, you can see that it has propagated to um, all configurations here. When I'm done, I'll say OK. And you'll see then that it also applies over here. So now let's save this. And we will um, close the drawing and look at it in the local view. Now it is still checked out to me. So if I like, I can come back down into the revision block and I can edit this here. And I'll save the changes that I made within the file data card. So now when I open it up again in SolidWorks, you can see that it did indeed update the cell within the SolidWorks drawing on the custom. This has been Jim Ward from Go Engineer demonstrating how to link a revision column to a custom variable in SOLIDWORKS PDM and have the value linked to a field in its data card.